the overall goal of this course, course one and course two, is to give people that may already have a very deep understanding about one aspect of mobility, maybe it's automotive engineering, it's roadway maintenance and planning, help them understand uh, how broad uh, of uh, input really needs to be drawn upon in order to make successful mobility decisions in a community uh, or even in the design of a product. We can't think of mobility uh, as these little individual disciplines. That in, in fact, mobility is inherently a multidisciplinary challenge and to successfully undertake and address mobility challenges requires a multidisciplinary approach. Where I see mobility going in the future is really much more of a, an overall holistic systems approach. It's one thing to offer, for example, uh, mass transit in a community and you have a bus line and it goes on a certain route and it picks up at certain locations at certain times of the day. But that doesn't mean that the person has the ability to get to that pickup point or get where they need to go at the end of that, either the initial bus ride or if they have to make a connection, a second bus ride. There are still gaps. There are gaps between the bus stops and the, the, their origin and where their ultimate destination is. And it's usually those, those distances are known as commonly referred to as a first mile, last mile challenge. A lot of times we're thinking about this in, with respect to ourselves. And if we don't have any mobility limitations or challenges, uh, it's a matter of walking or riding a bike, but not everybody's able to do that. Solving the big mobility challenges really aren't technical. I'm not dismissing the difficulty of solving technical challenges with, for example, fully autonomous vehicles. Use data to make data-driven decisions. We have to understand the safety implications. We need to understand the implications on the infrastructure and how the infrastructure should be designed in the first place. How are we going to pay for all of this? And what are the, you know, legal and regulatory implications? So, you know, automatically that means we're, you know, drawing from expertise from the law school and urban planning um, and public policy. Uh, it is no longer just an engineering undertaking. How are people going to get to the grocery store, to the healthcare that they need? We have to stop looking at um, things just in a sense of traditional transportation. Again, can't just be talking about cars and, and trucks and even you know, light rail. We have to think about how people are going to actually be able to utilize those, those options. If somebody can't get across the threshold of their own doorway, it is meaningless that an automated vehicle can be sitting out at the curb waiting for them. They may still need assistance getting across that threshold, down a couple of steps, and even getting into the vehicle. And once they're in the vehicle, and one of our lecturers, uh, Dr. Monica Jones, talks about if somebody's confined to a wheelchair, how does that wheelchair get uh, secured within the vehicle and then them secured within the wheelchair? So the, the assumption that automated vehicles, for example, all of a sudden are going to be this panacea um, is perhaps true for those that are us, you know, those of us who are able-bodied, but people who have mobility challenges Almost none of these companies are looking at addressing those specific kinds of needs.